Dr. Yolandra Hancock, a proud member of the American Heart Association, Greater Washington Region Board of Directors. And I am elated to be part of our Red Chair Series Conversations, where we inform and empower women to be strong advocates for their health and well-being and for the health and well-being of women and girls in their lives. It's an honor to be here with you, Dr. Driggers, especially as a pediatrician and as a mother myself, to talk about the critical issue of maternal health. Before we jump into the conversation, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your practice? I am a maternal fetal medicine specialist at Johns Hopkins Sibley Memorial Hospital. As a maternal fetal medicine specialist, I underwent extra training to ensure that I could care for high-risk pregnancies. A pregnancy may be considered high-risk either because there's problems with the baby or because there's problems with the mom, such as cardiovascular disease, which again, is such an important topic because it attributes to over a quarter of the deaths that are related to pregnancy. We know that there are at least four key risk factors to cardiovascular disease related maternal mortality. They include race and ethnicity, obesity, a history of hypertension, and age. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. The median age of pregnancy is kind of being pushed back now. It's not uncommon at all for me to see women in their 50s in my office. Fortunately, most of them will come ahead of time, so I have the opportunity to talk to them about the risks of age and pregnancy. But a woman, for example, who's over the age of 40 has 30 times the risk of dying during pregnancy than a than women who's less than 20. So age is, is definitely a factor in obesity. Well, we do know that increasing obesity increases the risk of cardiovascular related death, and that increases with BMI. Race and ethnicity, definitely, we know that non white persons have a three to four times higher chance of dying in pregnancy than white race does. And this may be attributed to some of the comorbidities that non-white race have, such as obesity that we just spoke about, but it also may be due to some systemic biases in the healthcare system. And then having a history of previous cardiovascular disease, such as hypertension. So somebody with a pregnancy complicated by hypertension has about a 13-fold increased risk compared to somebody who doesn't have hypertension of heart attack during pregnancy and an eightfold increased risk of, of having heart failure during pregnancy. So one of the things that you mentioned was differences based on race in terms of maternal outcomes. We're here in the nation's capital where a black woman has a 75% higher likelihood of dying during the maternal period. Can you talk a little bit more about the disparities, those that we title social determinants of health and how that influences pregnancy outcomes? Absolutely. Some of this might be related to barriers for seeking care prior to pregnancy, which might identify risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. Even during the pregnancy itself, I think we have some missed opportunities in this group in identifying cardiovascular disease, and there may be gaps in providing high-risk obstetric care to this population. What should we, as women, look out for, particularly pregnant women, when it comes to cardiovascular disease during pregnancy? Right, and I think one of the biggest problems is that many of the symptoms of cardiovascular disease are common symptoms of pregnancy. Right. So fatigue, I mean, have you ever met a pregnant woman who did at some point in her pregnancy complain of being fatigued, right? So it's all about investigating further. So if somebody complains of fatigue, mild fatigue is normal, but if you're having extreme fatigue with little exertion or at rest, that needs to be further evaluated. Mm -hmm. Similarly, shortness of breath. Right. It sounds to me, based on what you're saying, for a woman to really be in tune with her body and listen to what her body is saying. Absolutely, and to advocate for herself. So what can we do as women now to decrease our risk? If you are identified to have cardiovascular disease, make sure you plan your pregnancy care as well as delivery in a facility that has all the specialists needed to, to have that multidisciplinary care that you will need. As we conclude, is there one piece of advice that you would want to share with our audience? Pregnancy is kind of a stress test on the body, but it is also kind of a window into the future health. For example, if somebody has uh, gestational diabetes in pregnancy, they have a 70% lifelong risk of developing type 2 diabetes later on in life. So it's important that these patients let their primary care providers know and can go for yearly physicals right. so that they can be screened for the development of these diseases. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Driggers, for your insights and your expertise. That concludes our conversation today. But there are plenty of online tools and resources at www.goredforwomen.org. Huge thanks to Johns Hopkins Medicine for their support of our Red Chair series. Thank you.